But uh, I got it all together. Uh, trying to throw things together and get everything sorted out was pretty tricky. But now we're, we're going to be doing the, this is the very first um, adventure building um, tutorial that I'm going to run. There is a format to it, so I will actually have some slides first. There will obviously be an opportunity to ask questions. I'll do that after. And uh, I'm also going to run a poll. But on top of that, my intention here is to uh, actually build an adventure. So we're going to make an adventure and answer your questions. So feel free to ask as many questions as you like. And we'll try to do do everything, the things that you sort of were looking for um, in adventure building. Like when I say adventure building, I do not mean professional adventure building. What I mean is for you, like... We're not publishing here, okay? What we're doing is we're making an adventure for your group. That's that's what I'm trying to do here. So grab some food, some drink, get comfortable, and uh, we'll get started, shall we? <clears throat> okay, I think I've got everything where I needed to be. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Weller and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. Well, because I usually always do talk about Dungeons and Dragons and this is intended to be a Dungeon Master preparation tutorial. Okay, this is designed specifically for a Dungeon Master who wants to build their own adventure. And what I've done is I've put together a basic sort of package to allow you to do that and make it as easy as possible without giving you a lot of stress. The idea is to reduce stress and maximize um, the output and the success of what you're trying to do. So that's what we're gonna to do today. So I'm going to be covering a few things. I'm gonna be covering the types of adventures that exist that you can create. I'm gonna talk about the types of quests, which is a kind of, uh, when I say adventures and quests, I'm gonna differentiate those, okay? And then we'll go through the actual process of basic adventure building. I'm using and utilizing a very quick, fast method. This is a basic structure. This is what Chris Perkins uses at his table. He is an experienced dungeon master. He may not need as many notes as you do, uh, but it gives you the basics that you require for any kind of adventure. And he does, in fact, know what he's talking about, so I feel like he's the person to go to with regard to this. I've been using it for years. I'm also going to go over some miscellaneous recommendations. The intention is to give you just what you need to get the job done, okay? So for today, I'm going to explain how to build an adventure for Dungeons & Dragons. We're going to demonstrate how to do so. I can't do the practical um, aspects, so I can't pull you into the stream at this point, but I am hoping that in the future, that will in fact be possible. But for today, it isn't possible. Now, I would say that D&D Beyond has a lot of tools. I wouldn't say it has all the tools that you need at present, but it's doing pretty well. And they do have a combat encounter builder for Dungeons & Dragons 5e that's available for free. Now that won't cover everything that you need because you're not going to be um, building an adventure that's just combat focused unless that's what you want or that's what your players want. But that's one tool that you can utilize. Uh, I will of course um, provide um, other places you can get resources and uh, that will be provided uh, probably mostly to patrons, but I will talk about them here anyway. So let's talk about the types of adventures. Now when I say the types of adventures, what I actually mean is the structure of an adventure and what they look like. There's a lot of videos, there's a lot of advice on the internet that covers this sort of thing, breaking it down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down for you into the basics there's nothing particularly bad or good about any of these, okay? They just do things differently. So when I say um, types of adventures, what I'm talking about is the difference between sandbox and linear and point crawl, which I will explain to you very shortly. <clears throat> and then I'm also going to talk uh, and a, a bit about the combination of those and um, location versus event-based ad um, adventures because they, they are very different. Okay, so here we go. So when it comes to the sandbox, which is also called the hex crawl adventure, this offers the probably the widest range of um, versatility and options and uh, things that players can actually go and do. Okay, so essentially the player characters start in a set location that you will pick. You may even allow your player characters to actually select the location. Okay, and then they venture out to any of the new places they would like to explore. 
And so they can go anywhere, which means you have to prepare quite a lot of material because you don't know if they're going to go north, south, east, west. So there's a lot to cover. It's probably one of the more taxing types of adventures. And then you have what is essentially called the linear adventure. This is where the characters start at a beginning point or beginning location, and they follow a set path. And it reaches a climax to the story or your adventure, and there will probably be some very strong plot lines to it. So the plot is very heavy, whereas with a sandbox or hex crawl, your plot may be very general, or there may not be actually a plot, because the concept behind the sandbox compared to the linear adventure is the player characters create the plot for you in a hex crawl or a sandbox. Then there's a third type, which a lot of people may not be aware of, and that is called a point crawl. It's not the same as a hex crawl. This adventure is built uh, with meaningful locations that are con and connected by multiple in-world pathways. So what it means is it's kind of like a railway track with multiple tracks. So when you get to point A, you may be able to venture out onto three different tracks. You follow those tracks, and from those three tracks, they also branch out into their own um, pathways. So the best way to actually design any kind of point crawl is usually with a flow chart, and it will be quite, it will look like a tree. And the tree, I mean, if you start at the bottom and work your way up, it's going to branch and get wider and wider. And if you start your, um, your tree for your flow chart, with the, um, the point crawl, it's probably going to be quite small at the top and then branch out and get wider and wider at the bottom, depending on whether you start at the top or the bottom. It doesn't matter. Okay, but the idea is that you wind up with more and more branches. It's quite a complicated thing to do, um, but it's still, you, know, you can make them as complex or as simple as you like. One of the things with a linear um, adventure is the flow chart and progression is very easy to lay out, whereas a sandbox is not so easy to do so. Now there's also a combination of these three basic types. You can combine the sandbox, the linear, and the point crawl all together if you want. And often you'll find that a point crawl or a linear aspect or a sandbox is more suitable for certain parts of your adventure. So one of the things that Wizards of the Coast does is they will often build adventures that are very linear. But this is kind of how they work. You get, at point A, you venture out, you get on the track, you get to point B. You get off at the train station, and at the train station you can go and explore. You essentially have a little sandbox here. And then when you finish that location, you get back on the train and move on to point C. And then again, you get back out, and there's another little sandbox, and you explore, get back on the train when you're finished, and then venture off to point D. And that's a combination of a sandbox and a linear adventure. I know a lot of people often um, will look at those adventures and suddenly think, well, actually, that's a very linear adventure, and actually, no, it's not. What you're, what you're probably um, noticing is that um, essentially what you've come across is that there is a combination going on here rather than something else all right now there are another we can break down our adventures again into uh some two more brackets and that is the location based adventure and the event based adventure now a location based adventure is often what is viewed as the older version or the older type of adventure the old um, adventure models, um, um, modules put out by Wizards of the Coast, uh, TSR should I say, not Wizards of the Coast, but put out by TSR, most of their adventures were very much a location based adventure. That meant that there was one single, there was a ultimate goal to achieve, but you could go anywhere and do anything. In some cases they may not even have that. They were just a location and it was really the players deciding how they would interact with that location that determined what would happen. Okay, In a location-based adventure, you don't usually set a lot of plots. There's not a huge plot, there's not a lot of events that take place, although you can build them in if you, don't, uh, if you want to, but you usually don't have set plots or events. Okay, Basically, this location or place, the conflict is going to be with the villain or whoever owns or is doing something in this location. There's a potential conflict to interact with 
with the player characters. That's the concept of the location-based adventure. Now, the location-based adventure, its assumption is that the dungeon master does not build the plot for the adventure, that the players will build the plot and the plot will be different for every single table. So that's not a bad thing, it's just a different style of doing it. Now the event-based uh, ev adventure, often viewed as uh, by some people as far more advanced and better, um, it is a flow chart. Basically there are some set events that take place and you move from one event to the other. There may be some branches on those events on that flow chart, um, but you get branching options. And you have a set point usually and you will eventually get to, uh, now there may be two potential end points or three, or there might be just one. But you can take um, different pathways along this event train. And that's really a very plot driven um, adventure style. I don't use that because an, uh, a plot driven and event style um, adventure is much more difficult to tie in to my group it's not my style of doing it. It's actually a lot more difficult to do than location. And also too, if you are putting this together and you wanted to have it run with a different group, it's actually more difficult because you, you find you have with an event-based adventure, you have to build it for the, for the group. It doesn't work otherwise. If you don't build it for that specific group of people, it, it usually doesn't transition well over to somebody else, which is why a lot of the pre-made adventures that are very event-based, people struggle to get them to work because they can't contend with the, the variation of what players are likely to do in the adventure. Okay, So those are the things that we're dealing with here. <clears throat> I'm just going to take a drink of water and I'll continue. Right, types of quests. So what I've done is I've broken down all of the different types of quests that you might engage in or want to select for your adventure. And basically the idea here is you, fig you figure out what is going to work best for you and your players and what your ultimate goal is. But all quests are usually broken up into about eight different types. So the first one is your fetch quest. Um, this is where the, the characters have to get something uh, from another location that is potentially a long way away. It's a long distance to travel to get to it. It may not be a long distance away. It might be that they have to do something else, like whatever they're getting is in a difficult place to get to. But you, it's basically you're fetching. It's like you're playing with a dog. Now, a good example of a fetch quest, if we take it to movies and pop culture, is actually... Avengers Endgame. Now because the the heroes in this case uh, they have to collect up all of the um, infinity stones and they need to have they need to build a gauntlet and insert those stones into the gauntlet and then activate it. It is essentially a fetch quest and you've got all these different um, stones in different locations. The best example of a fetch quest that I can think of. The next one is the delivery quest. Uh, this is where characters are in the possession of an object. It might actually be a, a person or a piece of information, and they must deliver it to a specific location. Now, when I say object, person, or information, that concept is very broad. It's, and we are thinking delivery. So you're not, you're not exactly the um, postman, but a good example of a delivery quest is Lord of the Rings. Now the concept behind Lord of the Rings in terms of delivery is that you take this object which is the, the one ring and we take it to Mount Doom and out, we're going to deliver it into the into the lava right and then just it'll be destroyed but it's essentially a delivery quest okay Lord of the Rings a very long one but still a delivery quest the next one is a protection quest where the characters have to escort a person safely to a secondary location potentially or while they are in a set location. <clears throat> Ultimately, it's, it's about protection. Now, you can also include protection um, with objects, so maybe they have to protect an, um, an item or an object of some kind, uh, but normally they tend to revolve around trying to keep a, a person, an individual, a creature, a being alive and safe. Okay, so a good example of something like this is the, the Seven Samurai, 
where the seven samurai need to protect the villagers. Okay, uh, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about when I say the seven samurai, it was the original movie put out before we got the Magnificent Seven, which is basically about uh, a bunch of cowboys, um, sharpshooters, and so forth, um, gunfighters, and they are protecting a town from a, a villain. Okay, another r- really good example of a protection quest is the new um, multiverse of madness um, Doctor Strange movie where the young girl is actually going to be protected by Doctor Strange from a, um, a dark force that's trying to take her or do something to her. Okay, so that is a protection quest. Our next one is the destroy quest or the kill quest. Now this requires the characters to go on a monster hunt, sometimes it's a monster hunt, or vanquish a villain or break an object. So essentially we're going to destroy something or kill something. The best example that I can think of in pop culture with regard to a destroy quest or kill quest is actually Star Wars. Star Wars is about wars, it should be obvious, right? So in this case, our main characters, what they're trying to do is destroy the Death Star and then later on the second Death Star, and then later on Star Killer Base, and then also destroy De- uh, Darth Vader, and then of course um, um, Darth Sidious. Like it's all about kill and destroy those those particular um, stories. So that is a destroy quest or a kill quest of some kind. Your next one is the investigation quest uh, that gets the characters to find information or investigate a mystery. They might, might have to solve a crime or a problem. And the best example that I can think of is the book, um, book series Sherlock Holmes or the movie um, movies that are, and TV series that have been put out on Sherlock Holmes. Basically, Sherlock Holmes with Dr. Watson have to investigate from clues what's been going on. It might be a murder, it might be a strange uh, mystery that's taken place, um, a burglary, and uh, usually a lot of these are all connected to Moriarty. Like that is the best example of an investigation quest. Probably one of the more difficult types of quests to actually make work successfully because it's, it, it, it assumes an awful lot on the, um, on the players in terms of what they can do and what they can't do. Okay? All right. Now, our next one is the negotiation quest. And that is, it's going to require our characters to deceive, persuade someone. That Now, this might involve anything. Now, when you're deceiving or persuading somebody, it could involve um, diplomacy, like legitimate diplomacy. It might be, and there might be some intrigue going on there. So there might be some multiple factions that are um, at, at loggerheads with each other, but it's not completely obvious straight away. And there may be some trade taking place, so you may need to deal with trade. Now, for me, negotiation quests, probably one of the hardest things uh, for players who are very combat focused to contend with. Um, I would say in pop culture, the best example of that is actually Star Trek and the movie, is it Avatar? I think it's the original movie by James Cameron, Avatar. Is it that Avatar that I'm talking about? I think that's right. Um... It might even, you could even lump in um, The Last Airbender Avatar uh, in terms of negotiation. So with Star Trek, the idea is that the Enterprise and its crew, they go out and they're constantly negotiating with different alien species. And when I say this, I'm referring to the original rather than some of the other ones that seem to be more like Star Wars. Uh, And It wasn't about blowing you up. It's not about threatening you with um, uh, laser beams or anything like that. It's usually trying to solve a problem for somebody else and come to an agreement, um, like rational individuals. And Avatar is a a negotiation that breaks down the James Cameron movie between um, the indigenous people and um, humans that have come to the planet. And they're they're after a particular resource and that trade does do, just doesn't come off very well. And so, of course, there is ultimately a war in this case, but um, this is probably the best way. I think Star Trek sort of nails it down pretty well. Okay, uh, the next one is the survival quest. This forces the characters into a dangerous situation. They have to get out of it. Um, there may be some sort of natural disaster. There may be an army on a warpath. They may be in a prison. 
Uh, you can also include in terms of survival quest just surviving, like uh, just wherever they are, they just need to survive that situation. But ultimately, in some way, they're probably trying to get out of something. Okay, I think the best example of a survival quest that I can think of is the Living Dead when you're surviving the the zombie apocalypse, or for those of you who origi- um, uh, remember the original um, Alien movie, and I, even I would say um, Aliens, the, the follow-up movies, often sort of work this way. It's all about survival. You survive the the black alien that uh, you know has a face hugger that attaches to your face, puts some sort of horrible thing inside you, and then bursts out of your chest and then turns into full adult um, alien. Like the idea is to survive these things, and that's what Ripley does in that movie: is survive the alien um, threat. So that's your survival quest. Your next one is the attainment quest, where you have the characters seek out a treasure like an object. It could be a person um, or other things that could could sort of include some sort of um, political power or position. So they are, they are, the attainment quest is very, very broad. It's not just items and objects and people. It could include political power or positions it may include um, acquiring land or a castle or a fortress of some kind so it's an attainment quest okay the best example of an attainment quest that I can think of is Moana now for those of you who are unaware the idea is you have to get hold of this gem and that's what is going to solve the problem of the oceans going black okay for those of you who don't know what the heck I'm talking about let's go to Finding Nemo it's in the title right there, okay? Nemo is a um, young fish that's got lost, separated by him from his dad, and dad and a friend go off looking for Nemo, who's gotten lost in the ocean. This is a, an attainment quest. So those are the different types of quests that you get. Uh, and it's about deciding on which one you think is going to be most suitable for you and more, most benefil- beneficial to you. So now we need to discuss the basics of actually building the adventure since I've gone over all of that stuff, which seems like a lot of stuff. You'd be surprised. I was expecting to see this sort of thing in a Dungeon Master Guide, and good blimey, it was not. I did require assistance from other people to make this all come together. (laughs) And a lot of research. Okay, so the basic adventure building process. Usually, now, as I said, this is just the structure, and this is built basically on what... Chris Perkins, who is one of the lead designers, or in terms of story, he is like the lead designer, really. I mean, when it comes to story, he is it. Maybe not in the rules, but Chris Perkins right now is the the lead designer. Um, Now, whether you like Chris Perkins or not is beside the point, but his method is actually spot on. First off, we're going to deal with the adventure title or designation, okay? Now, the idea when I say um, designation is you need to differentiate this set of notes, these session notes, from something else, like your previous session notes. One of the easiest ways to do that is to put a number beside it or call the adventure, give it a title, give it a name. I like the idea of giving an adventure a name based on what you're trying to do. You don't need to make it um, super complicated. It doesn't need to be fancy. You are not trying to sell it to the public. So you, it's just for you, right? The next thing is we're going to break down. And this is where you will need to spend a little bit of time. I would say about a paragraph is about right. I was going to say between three and four sentences. And you're going to deal with your adventure goal your or your adventure hook or your adventure recap. It could be any of those, okay? Now, the idea behind this is if you're already running a campaign and you need to just recap what's happened before, and in part of that recap, it will be what they need to do next, right? That's Now, whether that's something you reveal to the player characters or whether they need to discover it, it's really completely up to you. But this is ultimately, this part is about what you have to do in the adventure to be successful, to move it forward. Now, if you're looking for adventure goals, you can find them in the Dungeon Master Guide for 5e. You'll find that page 72 to 81 does have a broad spectrum of concepts there. I'm not going to say they are the best, but there are some there, okay? Our next thing that we need to do, and please don't forget this, and that is list the player characters 
in your adventure. Those are the people who are playing your game. Because they have, that would mean they are the main players. And if you don't tie them and have some idea of what's going on, at least in this case, you will be able to remember their character name so you don't forget it. You're going to write it down. You write down the player character name. Write down their race. Write down their class. And I would suggest write down their floor. And write down their goal. Now, when I say the, say something like this, what I mean is you're using one word. You use what? It, it can be one or two words for the name. Their class is one name. Their race is one name. Their floor can be, you can put it down as one word. And their goal ultimately might be one or two words. And what you're looking at is one sentence. It is just the basics. It's not a, it's not a novel. Okay, you're not trying to write a novel. We're not doing that. Our next aspect is the adventure locations. And I usually try to list between, uh, I'd say about five in total. Part of those five locations needs to be your starting location, which is either going to be a town, a city, or a tavern. Uh, what we want to do with this is we want to give the name of the location, the basic description, sorry, the basic description, and that's it. It's not going to be a lot. So essentially, you're only really looking at about one line for each location. That's three lines in total for the locations, and that's it. We're not going to build them out too far. We're just doing the basics, okay? Now, when it comes to locations or dungeon locations or adventure locations, my advice to you is go and check out the Dungeon Master Guide. It does a pretty good job for 5e in terms of giving you stuff for this. Maybe not perfect, but it still does a pretty good job compared to what I've seen. And that's page 99, page 101, uh, pages 113 to 114, pages uh, 292 through to 301. Now you'll you'll find that there's a whole lot of different ideas here. There's a lot of tables and charts. They can be very useful. You still might need to do a bit of research to get it all done, but it's still great. Uh, Pre-made maps and realistic historic locations can be your inspiration for your locations. This might also include a separate page for the map. So even though our adventure is one page of notes, our map might be a, the secondary page. And hopefully that's just you drawing it up, okay? Whether you use software or you do it by hand, it doesn't matter. We're not going to be doing the map as such for the adventure for today, but we will be doing the locations and we certainly will be doing the encounters. That's what we want on this page. All right, so we've covered that. Now, I also recommend a list of about five non-player characters. In this, um, this list of non-player characters, you need to include their name, a uh, one or two words to describe the, um, what they look like, their appearance. We want something to, um, to build out their personality and something for their motivation. And we, again, we are trying to do that in note form on one in one sentence, okay? And we're doing that five times. Now, what NPCs are we trying to build? There are some very specific ones that I would suggest, and the rest are going to be extras. So first off, our main villain. So that would be one. The patron or the quest giver would be your second one. If you have a, a, a victim in your adventure that needs to be, um, uh, that's going to take center stage, then make sure you have the NPC victim. If you've got somebody that provides them um, with help, called the helper basically, that assists them in moving the story forward, then you have the helper. And then if you decide you need to have a mentor, you would have a mentor. And anything extra, now you're not going to have all of these in every adventure. That doesn't mean you're going to have a mentor and a helper and a victim. But you almost always have the villain and the quest giver or patron, okay? And the rest will be extras. So you, you've potentially got at least two or three extras to fill out other roles. The backgrounds in the player's handbook, I recommend, is one of the best ways for actually building a non-player character. And in future um, tutorials, we're going to be using that method and others to actually make our own non-player characters as a practical exercise. Um, so I would use page 127 through to 141 of the player's handbook for 5e. It has a whole lot of ideas. You don't need to do it randomly. You can select from the charts. Um, creating non-player characters in the Dungeon Master's Guide, there is a little bit of advice and assistance there. Uh, page uh, 89 through to 91 has information there. If you're dealing with your main villain, the villain goals in the Dungeon Master Guide, you will find on page 94 through to page 95. 
And for those of you who like rolling dice and are able to sort of create your own ideas, what we do is we use Rory's story cubes for the rest of it to fill in some of the gaps. Something I may have forgotten to actually bring with me today. That will not be any good since we may need them. Uh, so the last step is, is six, and that is encounters. I recommend between five and six encounters. I like to go with six because I find that I usually get through about six encounters. And when I say encounters, they might be random encounters, okay? Um, no, they're not going to be random encounters. They're not random encounters. We don't count any of our six encounters as random encounters. Random encounters we can do easy. Like, if you really want random encounters, that's another thing, right? Now, what we're talking about, encounters that we believe will probably be a combat encounter that we can set out, or, or an encounter that's go primarily designed to be a social encounter, and so engaging in, in a, this particular type of social encounter, it might be that engaging combat is completely pointless because the individuals they need to communicate with are no threat to them, and they would simply butcher them like dogs. So um, it would be a waste of, waste of their time. It might also be a combination of combat and social in interaction. So you can mix and match a little bit. Also, remember... You can also have encounters that are certainly just set out to be exploration. That means just exploring and finding stuff in a set place or location. Traps, you can include them. Puzzles, skill challenges, we're going to talk more about skill challenges in the future and build some. So those would all be here. Now when I say skill challenge, I don't necessarily just mean rolling dice. And I don't mean the 4E skill challenge because on that's not what we're going to be using. And I don't mean a single dice roll, okay? That is not a skill challenge. A skill challenge is a very different animal. Now, if you want information in terms of traps, you won't find very much um, on skill challenges or um, uh, a series of um, uh, obstacles in your Dungeon Master Guide for 5e. There's, there's pretty much nothing. They've pretty much got nothing useful to, for you in terms of puzzles. They do have a little bit of information on traps in the Dungeon Master Guide. That's on page 120 through to 123. That gives you your basics, okay? And then from here, you may want to expand on it, but that's really all you need. That is what we're going to focus on. The last aspect, and you've got to remember, like, the Dungeons & Dragons is set up a particular way, and that is with the process of solving problems, whatever way that might be, and there's different ways of solving problems, and then rewarding the adventurer or the adventurers with something for solving those problems that's what dungeons and dragons is that's what adventurous like when you go off on an adventure you have an obstacle or a problem or a challenge you overcome it or you survive it and you get a reward for that whatever that might be so this is part of the adventure process as well something that i have to thank william for who follows my channel and is a friend um, he did point this out and i had almost forgotten about it and that is you need to include what's going to happen in terms of character advancement. Do they gain a level? How many experience points do they get? Uh, magic items. Do they get political power? Do they get some sort of other treasure? Is there money involved? Are they going to be building up better um, relationships with a non-player character? All of these fall into a reward of some kind. Okay, let's deal with our miscellaneous recommendations because there's always some that need to be covered right so i'm going to just make it clear we're not trying to make anything that's like super fancy here we're not professional um, writers okay so don't spend all of your time on developing one concept of your adventure get the basics down as quickly as you can okay and also stop sweating the creative ideas in your adventure you don't know what people will like. Who gives a stuff what somebody else thinks of your idea that you've put into an adventure? Every idea that has ever been put into any kind of adventure is a retread of something somebody else has done in the past, in some form or another. So don't put the kind of pressure on yourself of, it has to be completely original. It is actually perfectly fine to use cliches and tropes as long as your players like that sort of thing and you like that sort of thing, okay? If you get both liking it, 
then you're good. It doesn't matter. So don't beat yourself up about this sort of stuff uh, and make life more difficult for yourself. The idea is to actually make the adventure and run it rather than never get there. Now, I'm hoping this was useful to you, and if it has, fantastic. I'm glad. I'm very pleased. The idea is to give you tools, and even though this seems like I have given you um, just very, very basics, it is enough to get you started, okay? We can get the job done. So, hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s, and thank you. Okay. I'm not gone, um, but you just need to give me a second while, because we are going to have to, I'm going to have to use my phone to check, keep an hour in chat, um, and I'm also going to have to um, have a drink of water. Um, I'm going to switch over to my face cam. Where's my face cam? That's not the right one. It's this one. Let's deal with this one first. Um, and we are going to, um, we're going to do an adventure. I will say right now, that um, this class will um, show up again in the future. You will find all of the notes for this particular um, tutorial. They are all going to be on Patreon. That's where I will put them. And for those of you who are wondering, like, what's the deal with um, uh, anything else that I might be doing with this? Well, essentially, uh, any adventure we make here, I'm going to put onto Patreon. Um, although the notes for this um, session are going to be probably a PDF, uh, which won't be difficult for you to um, edit if you decide to do so. The actual um, adventure we build today here, the intention behind that is it will be hopefully a very simple Word document that you can simply download and then modify and change for yourself if you're a patron. Okay, And for those of you who aren't a patron, then you'll just have to note, take notes. Um, so the best way to support this is by supporting me on Patreon because then you just get more and you, you're paying like a, a monthly fee and you just get everything that gets created along the way plus all of the notes for all of these things as well and right now there's going to be quite a lot of it certainly over the next two weeks it's going to be breakneck nonsense and if it doesn't kill me I'll be surprised um, the other way is to support me which I would prefer you don't do necessarily is by super chat and super stickers but if you're going to super chat or super sticker I would prefer if you tell me, um, look, $20 or more, and I will build you your adventure. We will sit here and we will make your adventure for you today. Like, that's what we will do. We'll sit down. We've got plenty of people here. We've got my brain. We've got your brain. And I'll get your feedback. And uh, Agile Monk, thank you for the super sticker. Uh, $50. Oh, my gosh, dude. Okay, I guess. Look, you need to let me know, Agile Monk. Do you want me to? Um, I know you don't need our help. I do know Agile Monk. Now, Agile Monk is a patron, by the way. Um, he doesn't really need our help in terms of making an adventure. Um, so what I was going to say is if you tw anything that's $20 or more, Super Chat or Super Sticker, we will make the adventure for you today right now. Okay? Otherwise, something smaller than that, I'm certainly going to be paying attention to your feedback. Um, I'm probably going to, I mean, my intention was to actually use the Mythic Odysseys of Theros because I think it's probably one of the best Wizards of the Coast campaign books I've ever seen, even though it is a Magic the Gathering um, setting and a lot of people don't like it, but it is based on Greek mythology. Well, it's pretty much stolen, okay? But it's it's got just a bunch of different adventure hooks, vastly more than the Dungeon Master Guide. Um, so let's just go through chat answer some questions and then we're going to build an adventure before I go we've got plenty of time to get it done you don't need to freak out uh, now um, where are we Morena hello how's it going uh, good time zone everyone yeah if it's a good time for you that's good news um, big clue how's it going I know big kid was in here as well at some point I just not I, I, I jumped into this pretty quickly I wasn't I wasn't mucking around I was like ah, let's just get this done um, and so I didn't really respond to that. So if Big Kid's still here, I am sorry that I didn't respond. Um, hi, hi. Yes, and, and uh, again, um, really big thank you to Agile Monk for the, the super sticker. And you're going to let me know if you want us to... Okay, here we go. Agile Monk, shouldn't item 6 be event-based? 
item six be event based? I don't know. Is that a, have I? Is there an error? Are you telling me that I have an error in my slides? It's possible. Um, um, adventure encounters. No, no. What's we doing here? Um, negotiation. No. What are you talking about here? Location event based. Ah, oh, it's e it's even even based. Okay. All right. So I need to make a note that there is a an error in that um, that slide. I'm sorry about that. Event based. Yep. It'll take me a few minutes to fix that, but I won't do that right now. Thank you for um, pointing that out. I wasn't I wasn't aware that that was what we were looking at. Um, so if that confused people, I do apologise. It was just an error in terms of me laying it out. I mean, I was laying all this stuff out like a couple of days ago. Was I? No, that's not true. That's not true. It's just a typo. Sorry about that. Dinomancer. Hello. Okay. So we are moving through here. Um, Dino. Fetch plus protection quest. Yes, you can combine um, quests, uh, quest concepts. You don't need to just use one. You can combine them and make them a bit more complicated. My advice to you is try not to throw too many things at the player characters. Like players can deal with stuff, but if you make it too complicated, it just makes it vastly more difficult for them to get their head around. It does make it more interesting for you, obviously. Um, and so you need to decide, is your, are your player base actually capable of dealing with that? So um, before we get too far and I get, um, get down here, I need to make sure that I grab my, what is it, my story cubes. Because I'm going to use story cubes. Um, so just look at the screen while I disappear for a second. Okay, all right, I got my tools. All right, now back to my face, and let's go back to the chat. Um, look, if, if we get to, um, I'm gonna give it at least 50, I won't, I won't go longer than 15 minutes in terms of Q&A and responding to chat, because I want to have at least an hour to actually work on this thing, and, um, and that's the only way I think it's gonna work. Uh, right, so, um, protection quests are high stakes. Yes, fetch and protection quests are high stakes. Yeah, yeah, I'd certainly say it was a good time. The magic pig, <laughs> take it to the wizard tower, absolutely. All right, and uh, yes, agile monk, you are very welcome. Um, I, I'm still gobsmacked that you you throw throw fifty bucks at me, mate. That's that's quite a lot, um, and you're also supporting me on Patreon. Um, I do thank you a lot. Like uh, this week is going to be a busy one. Uh, we've got. Non-player characters tomorrow. We've got monsters after that the next day. And then we've got locations. And you guys asked for a town. So I guess I had to put a town together. Um, all the concepts behind that. Um, yes, Dino, you, you're exactly right. That's that's what we're talking about. That would That's actually, yeah, that's the original. <laughs> um, Agile Monk, uh, Magnificent Seven was based on the Seven Samurai. That's right, yes. The Magnificent Seven was based on the Seven Samurai. Um, yeah, heavy RPG and heavy nar narrative, absolutely. Um, you watched Alien last night? It's a, it's a good movie. I always found it terrifying. Like, it's one of my least favourite movies to, to watch just because it is just utterly terrifying. Um, Buried Monk. Um, how are there 11 watching and only three people in the chat? Is that real numbers? I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, well, it looks like there's supposed to be 13 people here now. Um, you love my content? Well, I'm trying to do as much as I can. Look, we, we've had this discussion before, uh, Monk, haven't we, about what needs to happen, and so I'm not mucking around. Uh, good adventure hooks are always a challenge for a DM. This is actually one of the things we need to deal with today. That is, I always recommend three adventure hooks to get them into the adventure that we're planning to, to, to run. Like, th whatever the adventure is, even if it's one sentence in terms of the goal, there needs to be probably three different adventure hooks because you just don't know what's going to work and what isn't going to work. Um, 
Yeah, getting the players to connect, connect the dots, the adventure hook is very important. And if you can exploit what you know about your player characters, that is a good thing. Like, if the um, background of their character uh, gives you an idea of what they might be after, and you can tie that in to your adventure hook, that's great. It's better if the player characters do it the other way around. But I know there is a, um, a tendency for people to go go back to front with this and um, and have the dungeon master do all of the hard work trying to make it line up with the characters, which is ridiculous. What you do is you give them enough information so they can make their character for the adventure. Um, so Big Kid is still here. Okay, Buried Axe. Hello, Buried Axe. Uh, maybe paint by numbers is more <laughs> forgiving than connect the dots. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so um, this is what I'm going to do. Agile Monk has not told me that he wants me to make him an adventure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab Mythic Odysseys of Theros and I'm going to switch over and make sure my phone and I can keep an eye on the chat because we're going to need to do that. Otherwise, I won't know what's going on uh, because I'm going to be using my screen. I'm going to be sharing my screen and we're going to be going to Google Docs, nice and simple. And you, as the audience, are going to give me ideas. I'm going to fill in some gaps you're going to help me fill in some gaps and we're going to make this work and we're going to build an adventure and then it will be available on Patreon for those of you who want it. And those of you who don't want it, well then that's cool, okay? Or you just take notes as we go. So let us shift over to the screen that I require. We're over here and we're keeping it very, very simple today. Nothing complicated. And then where is this? This is, is this the screen capture? And transition over. So, transitioned over, and now over here, we should get, now I'm just going to let it, the um, YouTube catch up so that I know it's working properly. Okay, so what's that, Agile Monk? Uh, yes, no railroading and do, um, do over sandboxing. I, I like multi-path water slide methods. So you're basically a point crawl to give a proper balance and free agency to, to characters. So since we're dealing with six locations... Uh, we could go with a, um, a we'll make a, a beginning, a middle, and a, an end. So, um, so what I'm thinking in terms of this is maybe we transition from point A to point B, branch off. And how many branches can we have? We can have three branches, and then those branches lead back into the final, final location. So, um, hi Fender, how's it going? Okay, so that's probably the best way to deal with this. So let's start start with the first aspect of building something like this. We don't really need to worry too much about the concept of the title and designation just yet. Right now, um, the title and designation is sort of up. We'll build that as we go, right? So we won't worry too much about that just yet. So we're going to move this out of the way. I'm going to just move myself a little bit. Um, Fred, pick a member of the community that participates and let them be the person who selects the adventure path. Yes, I'm happy to do that. Um, I was actually going to run a poll, but um, I think you're right. I think, yes, three to five branches is perfect. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to put, I'm going to present some adventure hooks from the Mythic Odysseys of Theros, okay? Unless, of course, somebody in there just provides one and will work with that for today. I think that's probably the easiest way to deal with that. Okay, so this is right now designation is just one question mark. We'll give the um, adventurer a name when we are ready. Um, actually, we just put this over here. Cut and paste. Um, so, move that. Does that matter? Not really. And then our adventure hooks, we're going to need uh, a goal. Now, we'll build the adventure hooks once we have our goal. And I'm going to move this. Right, so I'm now opening my book, and we're going to find a couple of adventure hooks, uh, or adventure goals, should I say, that we can select from. Um, I guess one of the things I wanted to do is sort of highlight just how good this book is. Um, so let's go with something that's kind of watery. We have we have uh, Thesa, 
which is the, the god Thesa in Mythic Odysseys of Theros. So here are some different quests. I'm going to um, list them off. Darth Main, how's it going? We, so what we're going to do is going to get you to provide me with what you think is the best concepts, right? And then we're going to build an actual goal. What is the, the, the adventure going to be about? Like, what are we trying to achieve? Even with a sandbox, there's usually a goal of some kind, even when there isn't so much of a plot. So here are a couple of them that are in here. This is on page 172 of Mythic Odysseys of Theros. So we could help a village of um, Thesis um, faithful evacuate to the hills before um, uh, Thesis sends a great wave to punish the village's willful uh, coastal neighbours. So I guess evacuating a, a town could be one that we could use. It's, it's more event-based than um, location-based, so much more difficult. And I don't know that it's necessarily that... Um, it's not that interesting. Um, uh, Phoenix has uh, learned the location of a sunken treasure in a flooded cave. Uh, retrieve the treasure before his uh, fortune hunters can steal it from Thesa. So basically this would be a sunken cave or a sunken treasure in a flooded cavern, which means that you have to, you have to be underwater which would be quite interesting. We haven't, I mean, we very rarely do we have underwater adventures. This means you have to have some way of giving them water breathing, otherwise they can't do it. Um, it just won't work. So that's quite interesting. Underwater cavern, a treasure, and trying to stop um, fortune hunters um, from um, Phoenix uh, capturing it. That, that could be done. Uh, the next one is um, smuggle a cargo of offerings from Thesa past harbour inspectors at... Um, Miletus, um, skirting new laws put in place at the uh, behest of um, Holyad's priesthood. So basically, yeah, we're trying. We're ba basically it's a snuggle, smuggle it out of the um, port again. Pretty difficult to actually do, if you ask me. The next one is um, find a magically stolen vessel. Um, uh, what's this? Sequestered high in the mountains and return it to the the ocean. So basically, this is a um, a retrieval, like we are gonna we're gonna retrieve something and then we're gonna then deliver it to somewhere else. Um, and the what I like about this is it means that we can now utilize a mountain location, whatever that might be, and we can tie that into a magical um, item, which won't necessarily be kept by the player characters because it has to be returned to the ocean. Um, so that's actually not too difficult. That could be very much a location based one. Uh, the next one is capture a great beast of the land and bring it to the uh, the shore as an offering for a kraken. I like that. So, um, but then again, I, I like krakens. <laughs> so that means we would probably be dealing with a beast lair. Uh, building a beast lair is actually pretty simple. There are a couple of different sort of um, cavities that you would have. I was just working with that sort of thing the other day, actually. So we could do something like that. Could definitely be made a location-based adventure. And then the next one is humiliate a champion of another god, most likely blah, 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 blah. So it's giving you some ideas. An underwater adventure. Darth Main. So um, we are going to, what I'm going to do is, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to be very good at um, providing these options, but Darth Main, since um, Agile Monk was not really that interested in worrying about doing a poll, what we're going to do is just go straight with your idea. We're going to go for water themed so there's an underwater cave that's what we're dealing with today interesting i was not expecting that one but let's do that okay so um so let's just take this phoenix has uh, and the right so let's just make sure because we we've got to make it quite clear The god, Phoenix, has learned the uh, location of a sunken <clears throat> treasure. Now all I'm doing is taking what was in the book and transferring it into here. I can make adjustments as I need. So that you, you guys can do this. Like this is so easy. Like that's not that hard. This is why I'm using this book. It's quite deliberate on my part. Uh, in uh, flooded... Uh, Kevin or cave um, Kevin 
and the the hook or goal is retrieve retrieve the treasure before uh, his fortune hunters uh, can steal it. Okay. Uh, so, so some some refinement here. So the god Phanax has learned the location of a sunk of a um, sunken tre um, treasure belonging to the goddess. Goddess. Whoops. Get it right. Goddess. Uh, this the goddess is Thesa. Uh, for those who don't know, this is going to be... Um, so there are already two characters that we will need to include in our adventure based on our, our, goal, our goal right here. Like, that's, that's a definite. Um, and because it's location-based, it makes it significantly easier. So in terms of hooks, we'll go... Um, <clears throat> now, we could make it really simple and just have... Thesa request that they retrieve the sunken treasure. That is boring as, but we can still do it. Okay. Um, like, remember, we're going to do three. Yeah. So, um, Thesa requests a, uh, a player character. Um, request a um, character. Uh, retrieve the um, let's make it a magical treasure before um, Phoenix. Okay, uh, so that's one. And if you guys can think of anything else, you can see what I'm typing up here. If you can think of anything else, add them in. Other, otherwise, what I'm going to do is going to start with this one and I'm going to keep moving. Like, uh, one of the things I've discovered is when you're doing anything like this, if you stay still for too long, you get lost. What we do need to know is we need to know what this um, treasure is. or and I, I think we should make it a magical treasure. Whatever this treasure is, what is it? That is one of our questions. Um, so we're going to add this in as a question below. What is the is the uh, magical treasure? So we need to decide on what that's going to be. Okay. <clears throat> now keeping up with here, beating the treasure hunters to the um, the MacGuffin. Basically, yes, big clue. You're right. So it's 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 relatively simple in many respects, but. Um, what it what it provides us with is just the tools for what we can do with um, with something. I like the idea of two contesting groups. You've got the player characters working against another group. Plus, we can also include in here um, uh, another aspect, which is uh, things that they will have to get past. Because there's usually guardians that that will uh, be protecting or guarding any kind of um, treasure, right? Something to stop the anybody from taking it. Okay, uh, buried axe, um, loot, lust, and Mordenkainen's lubrication are good for the uh, the bait on the the hooks. Um, loot being the worm, yeah, but that's basically it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was being this end, and I kind of chat being the cork bo the um, bobber. Okay, solve the mystery of how the ocean ship got into the um, the cavern's lake. Buried axe, yeah. Okay, so a magic trident. Now, would a magic trident for Thesa actually make sense? I'm just trying to think in terms of what I probably should give you some information on Thesa so it, it is a little bit easier for you to understand wh whether that would make sense. I actually don't think it's a bad idea, so don't don't think that I'm um, dishing you for that at all. I'm just thinking whatever it is, since we are, you're thinking in terms of a magic weapon, which is pretty much like, you know, it seems to be the, the case with most things is like... There's usually some sort of weapon involved. Okay, Thaisa may actually be the sort of person who has a trident. 
Um, I can't provide you a picture of face, but what? Let's make it a magic trident. So yes, what is the? So let's change this. The god Phoenix has learned the location of a sunken um, treasure, um, a sunken magical magical trident. Trident, it kind of, it kind of fits because Thaisa is um, water-based and she does actually wield a, uh, a trident, much to my surprise. <laughs> so it's going to work all right. Um, Thaisa requests the characters retrieve the magical um, trident. Okay. Uh, so we will come back to that. So we know what it is now. Another aspect to remember is it's all very well being called a we now know it's a magical trident, but does does the trident have a name? Okay. So another new question. Whoops, did I do it right? Trident. Trident. There we go. Got it now. Okay. So what is the name of the magical Trident. Now I'm going to leave leave this stuff up. I'm not going to delete this stuff so that you can guys can sort of see the process as we go. Um, so I want people to start thinking of names that we can include in this because magic items without names kind of kind of awful. Like faces magical trident. Yes, we could call it that, but is that actually what we want to call it? Okay. Otherwise, we will select a name at some point. Poseidon, you want Poseidon's um, Poseidon's magical trident? Yeah, okay, fine, we can do that. We can always change it. If somebody comes up with a better name, let me know. Um, <clears throat> Poseidon's Poseidon's. I think is that right? Is that how we spell Poseidon? Probably is Poseidon's. All right. Let's do that at big exclamation mark at this point. So it's a big deal now. You can make it cursed. Yeah, well, it could be cursed. Um, that's really up to you. I mean, we, we can put it as, is the magical trident cursed? Okay. I like making um, stuff uh, cursed, but the problem is <laughs> um, I don't know that everybody likes that. And since we are essentially writing your adventure for you, um, data main, since uh, you, you are putting in a lot of the feedback, I will listen to other people. So don't feel like you need to sit back and let data main do it all, because that's not the case. Um, but uh, yeah, throw out some ideas and we'll get it done. Is so we'll, we'll decide now. Whatever the, if it is cursed, we need to decide what that curse is. That doesn't mean a cursed magic item is something that you don't want to be able to use. It doesn't also mean that the player characters will get to keep the magical trident. Okay, so let's let's remember that as well. Um, so yes, so this is this is exactly where we're going with this. Um, so so here so here's one of the things I would say. Um, so there is a grease. There should probably be a third party um, god who has agents also trying to snatch it. I think you're trying to make it too complicated by doing that sort of thing. Um, big clue. Okay. So let's <laughs> let's let's get eliminate the concept of the third party because that's that's much too much to deal with. We're dealing with trying to get a uh, adventure written today, not um, weeks from now. Um, now, in terms of a twist. You've just suggested here, Data Main, um, you could include a twist where the adventurers have to team up with the treasure hunters to survive a greater threat to escape the underwater cave. That there is not something that we as the dungeon master need to put in place. That is something that the players do. They make that decision. If they decide that the opposition is too strong, they could team up with them. Um, the only time that that's likely to happen is if you've got players who think, think that way, and uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with a team up. I've found, um, but I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just not going to write that in because that is actually something that the players have to decide to do. Um, what we can say is that you know the, the, the fortune hunters are willing to team up. The problem is they might turn on them eventually as well. Um, so we need to have. So one of the things, one of the NPCs that we need to include here, 
and our list. So we're going to go down a little bit. Since we've already established there's quite a few, <laughs> uh, we've got Facer, uh, Goddess, and we will come back to Facer, Goddess, and, and fill it out a little bit more. We have um, Phoenix. Now, it's going to be much more interesting if you actually get to meet them. <laughs> people if you're going to put these gods into a story it works better if you actually get to meet them rather than not meet them okay right let's just do that and then we also i'm going to make a general sort of npc branch which will be um phoenix's uh, treasure hunters and we can come back to that uh, shortly and then we'll make that and we'll add in some more um, so we have our we have our villains we have our quest giver potentially or we can do something else with that we have two more that we can pick we can go as high i suppose as, as six um, npcs if we absolutely need to um, so we've answered a few questions along the way Sorry about this, I just need to drink some more water while I do this. And I'm trying to keep up with chat at the same time and type stuff. I'm not necessarily the fastest typist either. Okay, so. Um, not his trident, just the name of the trident. Right. Okay. All right. Got it. What do you got here, Buried Axe? Uh, one of the powers of the uh, magical trident could be the power of Misty Step that works underwater, causes... A force cone of, of bubbles out to uh, 50 feet. Okay, so so now we're actually building um, the MacGuffin, which is, wasn't actually necessarily be supposed to be, so I don't want to focus too much on that, otherwise we're going to wind up spending way too much on the magic item itself. And we've got another session that will cover magic item creation um, rather than today. So let's just type down your basic ideas. Um, cursed. So, uh, the powers. Powers of the, um, the powers of, sorry, Poseidon, Poseidon's magical trident. Right, so we will uh, list them. They are going to be Misty Step. Uh, we're going to be using. Um, Thunder Wave essentially is what you're talking about. Thunder Wave um, and question mark. So we can come back to that if we need to. Um, I have to make sure this is a Word document so you guys can edit it and change things if you need to. Um, all right. Yep. I mean, there's nothing stopping it working underwater, whether it's Misty Step or not. Uh, I see. I don't bow. Um, don't. Yeah. Don't have the players bound to a decision. It's one of the things that you want to do with a location-based adventure. Is remember the players build the plot. They actually determine the events of the um, of what's going to take place, and um, it's probably the type of adventure that gives the players the most agency. So I know there's a big the big catch phrases giving the players agency and so we want to give them as much agency as possible and um, I find that this approach actually works very well so um, what's here uh, buried X um, is it uh, use a charge to cause the cone of bubble force use two charges da 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 okay so um, here's here's the thing for me I I despise recharge features on a magic weapon even though I know it's the intention behind it is to make it balanced. So I'm not even going to suggest recharging the Misty Step or recharging Thunder Wave. Like Thunder Wave is a good spell, but it's just a combat spell. Misty Step is far more useful. I mean, it can, know, it can be used in combat, but it can actually get you to different locations that might be more difficult to get to. That's, that's something, right? That's actually probably more useful all the time. But why would we make it? This can be an artifact level thing. We're dealing with gods. It's going to be an artifact. Like let's let's just go. Let's let's say it's cursed. I think this is an, a cursed artifact.
Artifact. Did I even get it right? Artifact. There we go. So, um, Data Main, you'll let me know if you think the idea of a cursed artifact is a terrible idea. Um, I'm not a power gamer and in, 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 in suggesting to dump things into your adventure that, because, again, like Poseidon's magical trident does not need to be kept by the player characters. Um, okay. Call the trident the Tide Turner. Fender. I, I like the idea. So, what we'll do is we're going to put in here, what is the name of it? We've got there, we're gonna we'll call it Tide Turner. I'm gonna put this in here as well. We'll keep it. I'm not gonna remove it. Tide Turner. Remember, the idea is you can go through and then just remove the stuff that you don't like. Yep. Tide Turner. I like it. Um, Tide Turner Trident. Okay, so <clears throat> We need to get some stuff done. We have not done that much. We've actually got well and truly distracted from this whole process. So um, no more bucking around people. It is time to get this done. So we want to get down the list of player characters. Data main. I'm assuming you are a dungeon master. And since we seem to be building an adventure for your group, okay, I don't know whether you use this or not, I need you to give me the names, the character names of all of the player characters in your group. Are you ready to do that? Uh, cursed Artifact sounds good to me. Good. We have just made it a Cursed Artifact. Bingo. Um, I think that's appropriate. Yeah, that's right. They don't need charges. Like, it's it's a god weapon. Like, that's the, the M14. Absolutely. Uh, curse of um, Fish Armor. The Curse of Fish Armor. Really? <laughs> you're funny you're funny <laughs> okay so while I'm waiting for data main to start giving me some character names yes okay you like so you need to write down um, what I would do is each line just write the character name and one word uh, we want the uh, race we want the class and if you have time to let us have a, a, a single word for the floor and their goal, great. But we need to have, at bare minimum, the name of the character, their race, and their class. So we remember who the heck they are. How many characters do I need? You tell me. Just use the characters, just use the players that you're currently um, running right now. Like, just, just pick those characters. Like, I don't, you don't have to put this adventure into your current campaign. So who are you, who, do you have some people right now that you're playing with? Just use the character names they've got right now. And we'll just pick their race, their class uh, that, they, that they're currently playing, and the name. And that's it. If you can't give me that, what we'll do is we'll get somebody else to start doing that. So if you can do that, great. If you can't, we'll move on. And I'll get somebody else to do that. Because I want to I wanna actually use something that's actually being used by somebody. Okay. The human cleric. Good. All right. We've got some information coming through. So I'm going to move this. This is getting in the way for me, and I need to actually get some work done because Data Main's giving me some information to put in here. Um, and since my my intention here is to show you you can do it in a limited amount of time, uh, I O S T O. I think I got that right. And that is a human cleric. Okay, that's our first one. We are going to make a bit of a space here. Let's spread things out a little bit. We're going to put this here as a number. Is that full stops? No, I've got number. So I remember how many characters there are. I don't know how many characters you have, but it doesn't matter. You just give me all of them. Okay, and, whoops, sorry. Um, datum main i a n drow uh, fighter okay good we'll come back to that um astral okay oh astral is it astral it is astral moon elf and it's a droid and um i'm already seeing potential here because we have a droid that's perfect. Um, and next we have uh, Pete. Pete is a dwarf. Wizard. Good. 
Right, and um, so Spike. Spike is Dragonborn. Dragonborn, Barbarian. Okay, whoops, sorry. Barbarian. Okay, right, so, and is that all of them? Plus one Narnia. Um, chew through those ropes. Very X. <laughs> Plus one Narnia? Really? You're funny. You're funny. So for those of you who are wondering, like, how can you contribute to this discussion? Look, the best way to contribute to this discussion is uh, is to come up with some ideas because we're going to have to start dealing with some of the locations that we're going to we're going to include in this adventure. Right? There are some specific locations. I feel like the locations we're ultimately going to be dealing with um, in this are going to be the locations within the the, the underwater cavern. Right? And so what are they What are they going to be? So there's a diff couple of different ways we can deal with that because we do have some resources close by to, to make that happen. Um, M14, you missed the top one in the list. Did I? Um, da -da -da, da -da -da. You're an insp aspiring dungeon master. I have read a lot of books but um, have yet to play my first campaign. Ah, okay. All right. Well, how, now who was this? It, um, okay, all right, so there's, oh, we do, sorry, I did, I missed one. This is, um, re, up, cool, blimey, that name's a, a, a handful, uh, gnome, and that's a rogue. Did I just spell rogue right? No, I don't think so. Rogue. Okay. So we have our three characters. Um, we have, at this present time, we have uh, essentially three NPCs. We need to have more than more than that. We need at least another two. We need to fill in a few spaces along the way. Um, okay, so maybe this will help you along your way. Name is totally from Narnia. <laughs> he is fearless like the character as well. All right. Okay, I got a, a call for them to. Okay, shit seven on a um, on a standard keyboard is yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I'm struggling. It, it is actually quite hard to type and do a live stream at the same time. Um, hopefully, I'll get better at this. Like if I get better at it, good good news. <laughs> okay, the Havoc Paladin. He likes the the main character. Ah, oh, okay, Havoc the Paladin. All right. So tell me when you say Havoc. Is there, so there's seven characters in this group, is there? Tell me about Havoc. Like, is what is Havoc? Havoc. We can't spend forever on, on the characters. We do need to move. Havoc is a paladin, but what, what race is um, Havoc? I have no idea. You, you need to let me know. <laughs> now we don't want to go into too much of the detail on the characters. What we want to do is we <laughs> we just want to get the stuff that we need. Um, Paladin. Often your, one of your biggest problems when you're a dungeon master is forgetting the names of the uh, the characters and uh, and all remembering what race they are and what class they are. This one sheet helps you sort of put that all in one place. Um, human. Okay. Human it is. We've got to have a human somewhere, don't we? Okay, human paladin. We do have we do have a diverse uh, a group here anyway. Okay, so that's that's that bit. We still need to come back and we might want to do some more with our um our adventure hooks, but so far we've got a reasonable amount of stuff. The next thing I want to do is I want to fill out some of these um, characters here. Um, our NPCs. Now we've got the, the NPCs, we've got the two gods that are involved, we've got um, our treasure hunters. Um, we may want to specify some specifics. You don't have to be sorry. Do not be sorry. Okay, we are going to make up some names. Now one of the things that I tend to do when it comes to names is I will just grab the player's handbook and you'll notice in the races section they often offer you some different names. Okay, so if we just grab the player's handbook and open to the race section There are plenty of charts out there that are random, and there is a website as well that you can sort of randomly generate names. 
but I'm going to call out some names here and people are going to let me know which name they kind of like the most. Um, I'm not necessarily going to call out the human names because, you know, I mean, that's really depending on you and where you are at and what your head is like. Yes, you want to know what the God and Goddess are of. Yes, so yeah, you're right. We'll come back to that. I want to get these name and the last two names sorted out too. So we have that filled in and then we can expand on things. Okay, so I've, I'm looking at the names for dwarves. So we want some NPCs that we can interact with. Beard X, DM, never say sorry unless it's just before uh, Rocks Fall and a TPK avalanche. Well, I suppose you could. But uh, yeah, so we will get back to what the gods are. Um, so first off, uh, names. I've got um, Adric, um, Alberich. God, that's awful. I'm not going to even pronounce that. Um, Brunar, um, Dane. Uh, Derek, uh, Delg, um, Eberk, um, Fargren, uh, Flint, um, Gardain, Harbeck, Morgrain, um, Usk, um, Oskar, uh, Rangrim, uh, Rurik. Anything sort of appeal to you? John. You want me to put down John? Really? John. Well, I'll start with John, shall we? We're going to have a John here. John. John is a human, I see. Does he have a profession? <laughs> have we already decided what, he's, what he is? Is, is John the, the, <laughs> uh, the bartender? Would he, would he be the one, the, the one that they meet in the tavern? Is, is that where we're going with this? Yeah, well, I've actually got the information on those gods, but, you know, somebody else can change it if they want to. That's that's fine. So I've put this down. Um, so I'll give you some ideas. I have, I've got some information. So, John, uh, I, went, I need another one. So some names. I'm still going to keep calling them out. People let me know which ones you like the sound of or make something up and we'll add it in. Okay, so far, John is standing out. Um, how? Who else have we got here? We've got uh, Thorin... Um, Tor, um, is it Tordek? Um, Travok? Travo, is it Travok? Uh, Vondel? Anything? It's Tour Guide. <laughs> All right, it's a Tour Guide. Fine. Yeah, you crack me up. You really do. <laughs> then uh, John is just a guy <laughs> he's just a guy <laughs> Joan instead of John yeah Joe O-N yeah you suppose you could yeah we'll, we'll put in bracket, brackets um, your suggestion there um, Alex Very, it's very French isn't it um the sole proprietor of the only map to um, to the known location. Okay, okay, so. Tour guide. Um, okay, um, so basically, this is our quest giver. Yeah. Or it is our helper. It could be, it could be both. It could be one or the other. And in fact, it could, we can use John as a way of leading us. That gives us another adventure hook rather than it just being... Um, Facer, who does this. So that's good. All right, so let's go. Um, um, map. So it has map of location. Okay, cool. All right. I still... Um, set bull hop. Uh, join us, the tour guide. Joannis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our, our line here is going to get a little bit longer, but I'll add in that name as well. Aiden the Tourist. Aiden the Tourist? Where do, where do, we, where do we get a tourist? You guys are, uh, are going to make a mess here. I can see it now. I put a um, Aiden. Aiden can go in. That's a name. Um, he's a dwarf. He is a tourist. Sheesh. Um, uh, I don't know what that other thing is all about. I'm a, I'm a little bit confused by Grotto, the, um, the bellhop. 
Grotto the Bellhop. We'll add that in um, just because I just like um, Grotto, which is going to confuse everybody later because we actually have to get some locations. Bellhop. Okay, so uh, we also needed to expand the potential names for this NPC, which it seems to be people are liking the idea of um, doing something with this. This is, um, <laughs> it's good to see that somebody's interested. Good, <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we can now go back to our adventure hooks because we only had one adventure hook, okay? I'm gonna use um, Buried Axe because your party is sneaking behind Donut and his um, tour, um, tour to find the place. Um, yeah, I suppose you could. You, you it's, you've got to be careful about adding too many complex um, elements to it. Um, so, so I guess what we want to do is we want to make sure that it's this is this is probably going to be very complicated if you start doing um, too much with it. So we've got Thana who can give them the request. Uh, we can um, we can also go with uh, the concept. Maybe now maybe the idea here is Jonah. Jonah um, had a um, uh, secret map map of the location of Poseidon's, uh, is it there? Poseidon, Poseidon, Poseidon's trident, um, and it has been stolen, but is able to redraw it for the party and he hires them to um, uh, okay um, get the trident first something like that not not the best hook <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's it's a work in prog progress um, okay so uh, grotto the porter carries the baggage can can fight in a pinch um, <laughs> okay right well, I can see that we are wanting to add in a lot more NPCs so we'll we'll put in your NPCs since you guys are having a good time here um, <laughs> So what did you got to the porter? Porter, bellhop, porter. Um, okay. And we'll just put down fighter. That gives us a, a fair idea of what we're doing there. Okay, and we'll add in your, your other character as well. I don't know whether, whether it'll be useful to you. Um, Harp, Harpic. Habak Habak the dwarf, dwarf, um, paladin guard. So I think we're talking about a town guard, huh? Okay. All right. So we've got those things, and I will fill out the gods and goddesses later. Um, but I want to move on and start and actually get some of these things that we have to get done. Like there are things that have to get fleshed out fairly quickly before we run out of time. And we still haven't done our locate, um, our encounters, which isn't necessarily going to be the end of it, but we'll see. Okay. On your left, you can observe your uh, typical band of adventurers meddling with the gods' affairs, a normal day for John. <laughs> I get that. Nice one. Uh, <laughs> they could protect him. It's like an expedition. Yeah. Okay. Um, adventurers hired for protection, but they can decide on their own course of action. Okay, they could protect him. Da, da, da. All right, so, yep, yeah, that's actually not bad. So let's let's go with um, party. Um, 
hired by John to protect him and his important secret map. Uh, that gets stolen, probably. So that's a sort of a stole, stole, stolen. That's sort of a variation on the uh, the first um, first one we had there, right? So that's not, although I think that's in the party hide by John to protect him and his important secret map um, that gets stolen. So there's our hook. Um, so we've got three hooks. The, the second one I think is probably the worst one. Um, the first one is probably the most basic one and I think the third one is actually probably the better of them. Uh, But remember, we have a druid apparently in this group who could be tied into this. So if somebody comes up with something, uh, let me know and I'll add it in. You could protect him. It's like an expedition, adventurous hide, protection, da da da. Um, perhaps it can be the activation command word, but it's um, on the original map, not the copy. Glad I made it, Fred. Um, Nerdtastic. Now, Nerdtastic um, does some designing. So um, Nerdtastic will tell me if I'm on the, on the wrong trail while I'm doing this, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so we have a lot of notes. We have some basics here. We kind of know what this is. If somebody can come up with a suitable name for this adventure along the way, we will, that would that, be good. But we are going to move on since we are running out of time. As far as I'm concerned, we need to get some locations. So first off, let's start off with where they're likely to be. We need a town, a city. We need somewhere where they can start off. Right, that's... That's a, like key to all of this. Um, so when it comes to selecting a location, if you're dealing with a pre-made location, right, um, it's probably it's probably smart to so water deep. There is no way I'm using the Sword Coast, so don't even don't even suggest that. You can you can suggest something from Greek mythology. You can see um, suggest something from Theros, but there's no way I'm using the Sword Coast. It is not going to happen. I, ha I have no desire to have anything to do with that. Like, there's enough of it. Um, <laughs> we're, 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 we're going, yeah. The Trident's Prong. That, Jim, um, Jim, that's a good name for a tavern, isn't it? Like, that's the Trident's Prong. Although, I feel like the Trident's Prong is, is that the magic weapon that you were trying to say? I actually kind of feel like we should make that maybe a tavern. Um, so, let's go... Oh, the Trident's Prong is the name of the adventure, Jim. I see. The name of the adventure can be In Too Deep. Okay, so let's go. So you guys are working on the... Oops, sorry, too far. That is my notes here. Designation for this adventure. We've got some names coming. So you guys have been thinking. Good one. Uh, the Trident's Prong. Good idea. Like it. It's not bad. And then another potential name is In Too Deep. Okay, I'll put them both in there, and that means that you guys can just pick the one that you like the most. You know me, I'm all into you having um, Atlanta. Now you got it, now we're talking. I, I'm happy with Atlanta as a location. Like, Atlanta is a good idea. Like, that's much, much, much better. Let's put that down. Um, at Atlanta. Do we want Atlanta to be a city? Um, or a town, I feel like we could make that a city. So I'm going to put down city. This is this is a good place to start us, right? Is often you really want to have a city or a town as your sort of starting point. So we, but we also, I would, I would also think that um, come in three acts like here, three prongs. No, no, Jim, I get, I get what you're saying here. I'm, uh, I, I like the idea. I think it's a good idea. Um, I've putting it. I'm assuming you want it to be the name, uh, Atlanta. So Atlanta. Um, I feel like this is going to be a island. It's going to be an island, and because we're we're dealing with water, still think oceans rest um, sounds good. Oceans rest. Now, is Ocean's Rest um, M14 supposed to be the adventure name or a location? Because I feel like Ocean's Rest 
would actually make a pretty good name for a tavern or an inn. Um, you will let me know. I feel like Ocean's Rest is what we will take. We'll take that one. We'll put that here. You'll let me know if you want it to be the adventure name. I can add that to the list. Uh, Ocean's Rest. It's a tavern. What's the feature of this tavern? I think we've got to find something that, oh, can be the mythical lost underwater city. Okay, we, f fine, that's what we'll do. Um, so Atlanta, underwater, sorry. Um, lost. Ocean's Rest is where the adventure starts. Start main. I think that's where we'll put it. Now, is Ocean's Rest going to be a tavern? Is it going to be a town? Um, is it going to be a city? You decide. It's it's definitely going under locations. Okay, M14. Got it. Thank you very much. So Atlanta is the underwater lost city. Um, I think we've pretty pretty much we've figured out that that's that's pretty yeah, it's cliche, but look, that's fine. It can be an island as well. Um, We'll put that there. The salty wench for the tavern. The salty wench, nerdtastic. Okay, let's do that. So I feel like Ocean's Rest might be in the name of something else. So, tavern. Um, salty wench. Tavern. Um, island like Crete. Yep, buried axe, yep. Atlanta in the, um, the Bay of... Um, Bay of Ocean's Rest. Trident's Prong is the pawn shot where they find the find the help uh, wanted sign. Um, okay. The Trident's Prong. Okay, well, I can add that as a pawn shop if you like. Even though, I mean, I still think it's a good name for a, an adventure as well. Um, Trident's Prong. Pawn shop. Okay. Uh, uh, so how are we doing here? Heaven's name is foreshadowing. Yeah, I see where you're going with this. And another uh, what's this? Fender, another name. Um, in sight under the sea. Sights under the sea. I was at twenty thousand sights under the sea. Could be a fishing town. So, Ocean's Rest is a fishing town. Is that what we're doing with? Fishing town. Fishing town. Um, okay, so I, th I feel like another name is... Yeah, so you're going for... This is the name for the adventure. So it's, that's fine, we can go back here. Remember, we have still got to... Oops, too far. We still have to make sure we get our encounters sorted out. And they can be just locations. They don't need to be set out as being combat. That's not necessary. But we need to start thinking about what we're going to be doing with this. Okay? We've almost got all the locations that we um, ultimately will need. Um, and I think we're going to need the name of a boat. I feel like there needs to be the uh, one of the locations needs to be a boat to get to this location, right? So give us a, a boat name, people. Uh, let's go with this. Uh, Twenty. Thousand sites under the sea. Okay, we've got a lot of different names it could possibly be. Challenger Deep. Okay, the Broken Hook could be the uh, the tavern or a pawn shop. Jim. Okay, like Baby Lob Lobster um, Prong uh, Prawn Prawn Spool. There's a lot of ideas going here. Um, or a boat. Yeah, let's go with the Broken Hook. The Broken Hook is going to be our ship name. There needs to be a ship that they use. So did I have that? It's still a location. Okay. Sorry, I have gone and pressed the wrong button. Broken Broken Hook. I just write the Broken Hook. Um, sailing ship. Okay, uh, we will add stuff to this as we need to. 
Um, Boaty McBoatface. No, Newton, I am not putting that down. <laughs> Boaty McBoatface is what my brother would say to me when he's like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I'm going to mess with you. So <laughs> I'm not putting that idea down. <laughs> uh, what we will need to do is we need to highlight this a little bit. Make sure we've got this. Um, and for those of you who are thinking, oh, Fred, that's more than one page. Well, look, you know, I'm taking everything. We, we, will, we will cull this thing. Don't you worry. Um, did, I, did I take it far enough away from everything else? Oh, there's the page. There we go. All right, we're on pond page. Uh, how are we doing? Uh, we, we, we are going to wind up bleeding over to onto it, but then there's a few things here that don't need to be here. Okay. Uh, long hanging fruit, Newton. <laughs> you, you, you are you're playing with me now. I can see it now. <laughs> um, so have we got all of the different things we need? We have some names. We have some hooks. We have a bit of an idea around that. We've got our characters. We don't have flaws and um, mo um, goals or motivations for these characters, but these characters, I suspect, don't actually exist. We've just got them down. Like, we've got some names for the characters that are in the group. Uh, we've got some locations. We've got a place to get them. So this um, this is really we are going to need to have a at least a ship's captain, uh, unless one of the characters actually own the ship, which is always possible. Cannons away, uh, possible pirate ship encounter. Yeah, um, the joke Fred is in the UK. Government let the um, the public name a boat, and that is the uh, the name they chose. Um, Boaty Mc. McBoatface. Yeah, well, that was a mistake on their part. All right, so there are a few things you probably need to know about um, gods and goddesses in this world, right? So let's make sure I have that here. Um, probably the easiest way to describe this goddess is goddess of oceans, okay? And see, um, uh, storms, uh, so affect storms, absolutely. Um, so there's a lot of that going on. So I will go with that as well. I feel like um, um, Facer is sort of like trying to duplicate um, Poseidon anyway. Um, okay. Is the sea troll named Captain Nald Claw? Good. Jim, thank you. We'll put that down. We were, we were in NPCs. Here we go. So, uh, we were having to add in a few more. We've got more than five NPCs now. Uh, so, this is name is Captain... Captain Nald Claw. Um... Uh, Buridax, yeah, you can put in more world pulls. We can do that as, as well. It's ocean, world pulls. Uh, we'll just take all of it for now. World pulls. All right. Uh, okay, so we've got that, that, and that. Uh, we'll move down. We've nailed a claw. We need to make sure we tell you what it is. It's a sea troll. Sea troll. Um, and... Uh, owns owns the ship and which ship are we dealing with we are dealing with our hooked uh, it's a broken hook broken hook there we go okay all right so the Eversail. Oh, the irony. <laughs> the Eversail. Okay. We'll, we'll, I'll put it here in brackets uh, for those of you who feel inclined to use that name. It is a little bit tongue-in-cheek, I have to say, for those of you who... 15 minutes. Okay, so we are not finished. We have most of the bits and pieces we require. Um, and this is in skeletal form, and we've been working for just under an, um, an hour. We haven't quite got to the hour point. I don't believe so anyway. We need some encounters. Now, what we want to do is focus on 
Atlanta, the actual underground um, cave location. Those are where we want to do what. That's where we want to put everything. Rather than spreading it out, we don't. We're not. We're not making an adventure. This is like a one shot. It's not like a full blown campaign. It's two hundred and fifty pages long. So you need to think in terms of if we're dealing with a sea cave, like what would you have in an underwater sea cave that would make sense to incorporate? Like what are we putting in here? Okay, so I'm going to suggest some different locations. You're going to tell me if you think they're awful and suck, and uh, we're going to go from there. So <clears throat> I'm going to put in what's our first one? Uh, we're going to put in a sanctuary. Uh, sanctuary, sanctuary to um, sanctuary of Thesa. The Sanctuary of Thesa is going to have a, a statue of what? I don't know. We will figure it out. Statue of something. Have a decision on people. Make a decision. Um, yes, Thesa would be on the player character's side. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah. Whirlpools. Ports PCs. Whoops, did I do that? Yeah, I did. Okay. So that motivation, yep. Got to have a holy site, absolutely. Um, since multiple gods are involved with a magic item, if we don't have uh, anything specific for an adventure plan, I'd have it be some kind of uh, petty dispute between the gods. There's often disputes between gods. Yep, absolutely. Is they sit on the PC side? Absolutely. Yes, we're doing that. Into an under, yeah, so we're we're going to just deal with the under the underwater cavern. This is what we want. This is in terms of our encounters. Let's focus on that for the encounters, rather than trying to to drag it out all over the place. Because what you do is you simply make it more difficult to actually put together something, and you wind up trying to do too much. Right. Remember when I said I was talking about location based um, over event based. Location based is what we want to try to do because it's easier for you to figure your head around. Like, yep. Yeah. Um, so, some different other, some other locations. So, Sanctuary of Thesa, somebody needs to come up with a cool sort of um, thing. It could be a statue too that's water based. Uh, even though it's underwater, it should have something that's sort of revolving around that. Is Thesa on Plants? Yes. Dire World Pull or Struggle. Uh, yes, I think you're right. You do def we definitely need to have a a whirlpool encounter. So tide pools. So we'll have a location which is tide pools. We might actually put that as the first one. I feel like the tide pools is probably our first one. This is where they would have to get past, right? So we'll cut that. We'll drop this. And tide pools. And we're going to have a um, whirlpool um, hazard, and uh, to give you some sort of real basics in terms of that, we can just make that a single um, skill check if we really wanted to, or they can if they've got magic, or um, they can resist it that way. I think probably the easiest way is to just make it a. I mean, swimming is strength, so we'll just go strength for now. This is very basic. I wouldn't suggest just using a strength check. I'm saying that it's just grounds for working with it. If somebody can control water, then you'd be able to deal with a, a whirlpool hazard. Strength check. Uh, DC, let's make it a 15. Uh, we need to have a consequence. That's going to really depend on the character's level. So, um, yeah. Or consequence. Okay, we decide, now I would just, you, look, you can use exhaustion in this case. Uh, you could, um, we also need to make sure that they get access to um, breathing underwater. So, um, where can we put this? No, we'll just, we won't worry about it right now. We're just going to keep going. We're going to keep working with what we've got. Okay. Mermaid, uh, but turned into a Medusa. 
Okay, so half mermaid, half Medusa. There we go. Statue of a half mermaid and Medusa. Are we happy with that? I think that is a good idea, Jim. Well done. Like that's uh, that's nailed it for me as far as I'm concerned. But if somebody comes up with something better than that, let's do that. Okay, so we need to have f f like five or six ideas and we've got less than nine minutes to get this done. So let's go with uh, a library. Give me the name of a library. Library. I always feel like underground locations are always fun if they have a library. That's where stored, stored information is. Uh, if we're going with something that has to... Ah, that's actually not a bad idea. Let's do this. Like, let's put in a stable. We'll make it a hippocampus stable. I know the hippocampus is a silly monster, but a hippocampus stable would be fun. Um, a battle at sea. Now, avoid, avoid. Now, no, skip that. Skip that. The battle at sea. That try not to to put too many things that that are going to cause you more hassle, right? You know, I mean, you can do that if you want, but with something like a layout like this, you want to be able to do it fast, and you, that's just not fast. Um, you can include some hippocampuses in the in this, okay? Um, wild, which would be fun because then you can try and capture them. I'll catch one and ride one. Hippocampus. Uh, hippocamp. Is it hippocamp? Hippocampus. Hippocamp us, us, us. Let's stay. Hippocamp. Stable. Okay, I think. Hippocamp us. Okay. Capture. And ride. Question mark. All right. Cool. Uh, like library is good for exposure. Um, we need two more locations. Two more locations. That would be interesting. Uh, we probably need to have something that is more in uh, like. I feel like a priest chamber is sort of where we're going. Um, no. That's not it. And then the last one, uh, another encounter. It could be a puzzle. It could be living areas. Um, it, yeah, it could be. It could be anything you want. So like like living area. Okay, and that. Is not quite as much as I would like to get done with an hour or less. We just we've done as much as we can in a very short space of. So we've got six locations that we'll fill out a bit more. We've got some NPCs. We've got our locations, okay, to work with. We've got our player characters. We've got our adventure. We've got the magic item. We've got our hooks. Um, we've got a few potential names, and we've only spent an hour, and we've done pretty well. I mean, you can see how long it takes to actually put stuff together. But we've done pretty well. I think that's actually pretty impressive compared. What I'm going to say now is I have got to go. Like, you would believe it. I actually need to pee, like, really, really bad. So, um, like, thank you to everybody who jump, um, jumped in. Thank you to all the patrons. Thank you to Agile Monk for the super chat um, or super stickers. Thank you for all your feedback today. You've done really well. And I will see you tomorrow because we're going to do NPCs. Hopefully, we get to do a lot more. So, um, make sure to uh, tune in tomorrow because I will do them for sure. It's going to happen. We're going to do NPCs. That's next on the chart. And uh, hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.